Now on to our next speaker. What lies at the intersection of fine art and cutting edge technology? As CEO of Morph Gallery, Scott Birnbaum leads an award-winning team of artists that bridge these two disparate worlds to create highly collectible fine art. He was at the forefront of many industry megatrends, including the vidification of devices, making the movie-going experience more accessible by bringing it to homes and pockets everywhere and enabling televisions that double as art galleries. Let's welcome Scott, who will be talking about reimagination onto our virtual stage. Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome to the art of reimagination. Together, we'll be peering through a window, exploring the journey of five artists that ponder the question, what if? We'll explore how technology impacts the creative process and how these artists are creating the next breed of art. This new breed of art requires a new kind of gallery. Hi, I'm Scott Birnbaum, and CEO and co-founder of Morph Gallery, a Silicon Valley startup that's infused with the excitement of Hollywood. Morph offers fine art by award-winning artists that push the bounds of creativity. We customize solutions for our meticulously curated artists, pushing their dreams even further with technologies like the art stick. We'll explore exponential technologies and how this is extending creativity. We'll look at the areas of robotics, neuroscience, and artificial intelligence. Our journey starts here. We'll look at how robots have become creative, how paintings have come to life, how art that's been lost to the ages is being resurrected, and how artwork can be teeming with artificial life that you can interact with, and you'll see photos that can dream and dream again. Welcome to the art of reimagination. I'd like to introduce you to Jerry Saltz. Jerry is a Pulitzer Prize winning art critic for New York Magazine. Let's hear from Jerry. I'm looking for humanity here. Dignity, horror, ah. originality, something, something. That's what we're looking for. On this episode uh, on HBO's Vice News Tonight, Jerry was asked to give his critical feedback on AI-generated art. Jerry was getting more and more frustrated as he looked at some of probably the most recognizable AI-generated art, saying things like derivative, seen this before, no imagination, looks like it's been created by machine. That's until he, he saw the art of our first artist on our journey, Pindar Van Armen. Pindar, as we start our journey, asked the question, what if? What if a robot could paint with the free spirit of a child? So he started on a 15-year mission to actually have robots that can have the ability to have some sense of creativity themselves. And his art has won him Robot Artist of the Year in 2018, and his vision has taken his art even further. The video that you just saw with the artwork that was painted by one of his robots utilizes a camera. The camera stops at each brush stroke, allowing the robot to decide what art should be, what brush stroke should be chosen next. Just like the inner struggle that an artist has when he is or she is looking at what that next brush stroke should be and is, is going through all the emotions, the creativity process, uh, Pindar's robots are doing that. This journey took him from originally uh, uh, just having a, a 3D printer that could allow the technology to be able to take over mundane tasks, things like background and things uh, like proportion, and moved it into a realm of creativity. Pindar's taken his art even further. 
enabling the NFT market, which is now more than $10 billion in third quarter of this year alone. Pindar asked the question, what if AI could create lovable animated collectible characters and his are some of the most collected characters in the world. His bit GANs are where AI meets 8-bit. So you could think of a Star Wars or a, 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 a Space Invaders character meeting the most complex AI algorithms to create these lovable bit GANs. And Pindar is uh, really at the forefront of the NFT trend today. Our next artist grew up in a family of painters growing up in Hawaii. And he asked the question, what if a painting could move? What if a physical canvas painting had the ability to have movement? I'm very proud of our uh, next artist, Steve Matson, who's also a co-founder of Morph Gallery and a good friend of mine. Uh, this journey took him 30 years and actually brought him to Hollywood. And I wanna reveal some of Steve's secrets on how he creates his art. A painting for Steve could take eight to 10 months. It's actually a moving artwork that's made up of more than 10,000 individual artworks. He starts off with a very traditional process where he's using paint on canvas and creates a storyboard for, for what his artwork would look like over this journey. Then he adds on cinematography, visual effects, digital painting, animation, and sound. And what you see is just simply incredible. Steve's 30-year journey took him to Hollywood, where he was um, a part of the crew that put together the Academy Award-winning Life of Pi. And he's been on such iconic films like Star Wars and this has enabled him to learn technology and processes that can make his paintings come to life. If you can think for a moment, how many works of art have been lost to the ages? Incredible masterpieces. If you, if you try to collect all of those and bring them back, they would fill all of the world's museums combined. So this next artist, which is actually two researchers from the University of Central London, uh, PhD candidates, um, asked the question, what if this lost artwork could be resurrected with artificial intelligence? And their exploration of this activity has won them the COGEX 2021 Best Innovation in Creative Arts. Let's explore their technologies and what they've been able to do to bring back some of these world lost masterpieces. The process is, a, is part of a white paper that this team created. And what they did was they started with a known painting. In this case, it's Leonardo da Vinci's Madonna of the Creation. By starting with a known painting and then taking away all the elements from the artist with the exception of a sketch of what that image looked like, uh, they wanted to see if AI could actually reproduce this painting, not knowing what this painting looked like. So when they stripped out the color, the style, the texture, they were left with the image on the right. Then using machine, machine learning um, uh, data from all of da Vinci's other works that were fed into a training model, and then using edge detection because they knew what the image lo had looked like, they were able to create this using their AI models. If you look at this, it brought back the color, the style of a true da Vinci, and this paper was published. And if you notice the image to the right, which was created not knowing what the image on the left looked like, at least the algorithms did it, um, this brought back da Vinci's Madonna of the Carnation. You'll see some slight differences, like the uh, button, uh, is a gold color versus a black on the left, and the baby has a little bit more hair, but it's an amazing recreation. So now knowing that their theory does work, they wanted to take this to the next level and look for an os lost artwork. This image that you're seeing on the left-hand side is actually a painting that's in the Tate in London. It's Modigliani's Portrait of a Girl, a very famous artwork by this painter. 
So using the process that I described earlier and in using an X-ray, they discovered that there was a painting underneath the painting called a pedimento, meaning an image under another image. Using this AI training model and other works from Adigliani and edge detection, the area on the right, you could see the ghostly image was recreated onto canvas as lost Beatrice Hastings. This video that we'll show next is, is showing the recreation process. So we start off with the actual painting, go through x-ray, then create the outline of the image that was underneath the painting, then using the AI algorithms to be able to uh, uh, look at Madagliani's other works. This artwork was actually brought back. But this was taken much farther than the white paper. This was taking not only flat images that would be created from these AI models, but three-dimensional height maps were created, new patent pending technologies to be able to produce this onto canvas using 3D printers. And Morph Gallery added an additional patent pending process of allowing this painting to be protected from fraud. So the combination of these technologies as well as this um, machine learning process in AI is now opening the floodgate to recreating the lost artworks of the world. Our next artist on our journey is Daniel Ambrosi. And Daniel asked the question, what if? What if a photograph could dream? Daniel takes iconic photographs of images around the world, hundreds of images, and then stitches them together. In cases of, of like this, there's more than 80 individual photographs that are stitched together to create this actual landscape. Uh, this high resolution image is combined with artificial intelligence and using algorithms that were created specifically for Daniel's work with an engineer from Google and one from NVIDIA, a dreamscape was created. So if you look inside of the artwork and you drill down even further, when you zoom in, you'll see incredible detail that wasn't in the original images. This dreamscape allows you to be contextually aware to notice where the rocks are, where the river is, where the trees are, where the lights are, where people are, and have this incredible dreamscape image. But Daniel didn't stop there. Daniel asked, what if again? And he asked, what if a painting could dream? So he took those photos, used the dreamscape process, and then dreamed on it another time and created an abstract dream, a Chihuly glass style type of art that was recognized and was shown as one of the new ad advancements in artificial intelligence at a recent NVIDIA Global Technology Conference. Our next artist is a pretty incredible person, Kevin Mack, he uses neuroscience and the theory of awe and, and he was inspired by his childhood visions and he wanted to be able to share these with the world and the technologies didn't exist. And so he utilized new technologies and neuroscience to bring his art to life and his artificial life to uh, visitors as they explore Anandala. We're gonna play a video and let you listen to Kevin as he explains his 2021 Venice Anandala is a virtual Anandala. and abstract art installation, unconstrained by the limits of reality. Visitors explore a complex connected labyrinth through personal flight. It is designed to inspire awe, engage the imagination, and enhance well-being through shape, color, motion, sound, and spatial presence. Anandala is inhabited by artificial life entities called blorts. Each shape-shifting blort is unique and has complex emergent behavior. Blorts express themselves and interact with visitors and each other through their movement, changing color textures, and their own musical language. Kevin 
is an Academy Award winner for Best Visual Effects for the movie What Dreams May Come in 1999. He was given an honorary neuroscientist position from UCLA Geffen School of Medicine in 2006 in the film that you just saw, which is an interactive virtual reality experience where individuals can interact with artificial life was awarded the Biennale finalist 2021 in Venice. Our last artist on our journey, Kevin Mack, is a great example of how technology can provide an endless palette of possibilities that allowed Kevin to dissolve the traditional boundaries of medium, process, style, and genre. But not just these five artists are asking the question, what if? One of Morph Gallery's co-founders, Nick Donnell, asked the same question to try to solve digital art's biggest challenges. What if a single device could protect, store, and play digital art and add new work works at any time? So he created the art stick. This device is a simple plug and play and will morph any television set into a fine art gallery. Your entire art collection could be put onto a single art stick adding new pieces at any time. And it's not just used for art within homes. Morph is working with a company called Aesthetics and is using Morph's art stick technology in rejuvenation stations in some of the busiest emergency departments in the country, allowing doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers to take a few moments out of their day to relax, unwind, reduce their stress, reduce their blood pressure, and enable them to go back to being um, of the world's heroes. It's a pretty amazing technology that has far-reaching examples of, of where this technology can help. So the future is pretty incredible, and we can't leave the future without talking about the metaverse. Be anywhere, anytime, do anything with anyone. The experiences that you'll have are, are going to be amazing. Digital twins are being created around the globe, including a uh, digital twin of Earth, which was just announced at NVIDIA's conference by their CEO, which is going to help model and help the world look for solutions on climate change. So the metaverse is going to be more than just a place to explore and have fun, but it's going to solve the world's problems. I wanted to leave you with uh, an, a, a really interesting experiment and getting you to reimagine the next piece of art. If you could close your eyes and imagine the most spectacular painting that you've never seen and then realize that you're the artist, that you've created this yourself. Even if you don't have artistic talent, you don't have fine motor skills, or you may not even have the technological background of some of the artists that we went on our journey with today. But tomorrow's preference engines are going to enable you to create and enjoy the next masterpiece. Just like Netflix today is enabling you to see a movie or a show that you may not know about in, in picking one that you would enjoy, preference engines will help you select art in the future and maybe even create it. So during our journey, we explored how technology enabled the creative process. We, we talked about how Pindar Van Arman enabled robots to become a bit more creative. How Steve Matson was able to transform canvases into moving paintings and how Oxyapalis opened gateways to resurrect the world's lost art. Daniel Ambrosi created photos that could dream, and Kevin Mack used neuroscience to create interactive artificial life experiences. So if you're an aspiring artist, a researcher, a technologist, or a fine art collector, or maybe even a tech startup investor, Morph Gallery would love to work with you. So 
Now you have the opportunity to reimagine yourself and ask what if, and together we could turn that into what's next. Scott, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, and thank you so much for being with me a few days ago in Cincinnati. Uh, yes. Your presentation is mind blowing as always. Uh, thank you so much. Don't go, stay because I we're going to have a fireside chat later.